Hey Aaron, how you doing? I'm doing good, yeah. yeah good so, to see you. Uh, Archaea Modular Synthesis uh, in full effect. Bristronica's rocking it today, actually. It feels yeah. very vibrant, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's picking up now. So, uh, what are you showing us today? Uh, yeah, so um, today we've got um, uh, the Exchange module, um, which is we've been developing over the last year. So, we had a I think last year um, we showed it briefly, um, but it was a very early prototype but now it's um, fully functional. So what you've got is, um, we've got a couple of synth voices and a beam controller all in this skiff, and then three exchange modules. Now, it, all of the patching that, that's being done in the skiff is being done through exchange. So it's a, it's a programmable patcher, a bit like you know, Think Matrix Mixer, um, except you can just hit a button and that will send you know that input to these outputs. Right. And you can you know just pick them uh, as you as you need. So it's a bit like looking down the row of uh, a matrix. Um, but with with this, you can store everything as presets and select them. Um, and also, each of the exchanges can now be connected together in a chain. So if you imagine... The one patch change rules them all kind of thing. Yeah. Sorry? So one patch change will get them all going. Yeah. So if, 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 you, if you look when I hit the preset um, and change preset, you can see the, all the others right. flash. So here, here, and it's changing over here. Gotcha. So they're all synced together, and uh, data moves down the Eurorack power bus ah, uh, to okay, sync them nice. all together. And then behind the scenes, there's a ribbon cable which takes all of the eight outputs along to the next eight inputs and so on down the chain. So, so, so is, that, is that merging them or it's just... It's, 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 you think it doesn't merge any, just think of it like, you know, it's just like uh, cables. It, so it is a switch, I mean it won't do, yeah, so it does so one, it, to, it, one to many, but not many to one. Yeah. Right, so, okay. So it, uh, internally it's an analog switch which is digitally controlled. So for instance, if I, if I put a cable in, you can see it detects that by turning green. And wherever it's green, what that means is it's, it's taking this signal in. When it's red, it's taking the signal from down the chain. Ah. So you, you, so you can... It's like normalization, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, but it's also pro programmable, so you can manually switch that over if you want to. So you can inject signals in, or you can pass them down and you know, bring them out wherever you want. So if I give you an example, um, we look at this LFO, which is you know, coming from this yellow wire. Um, when I hold that down, it shows you uh, down the chain you know, where that's patched through to. So, okay, okay. so ultimately, it's coming out of this cable here. So if I, oops, I've, let's just go back to that. So yeah, so when I pull that out, you can see that that's zero. I put it back in again, that's where, so that's, and vice versa, if I hold it this way, it will show you, you know, through the chain again but it's ending up here. So it just makes it a bit easier to see what's going, Got you. going on. Is there any attenuation or an inversion or anything, a tiny version that no, can happen it's, on it? Uh, it's all buffered, so it all just goes straight through. It's, you can just think of it like, uh, you know, just like you've got cables, and it's, because it's all analog, there's no conversion into digital, there's no right, latency. So, and or, so it does, but it'll do yeah. CV or audio. Yeah. Or both, right. Uh, and um, so it uses precision amps, so it's precise enough to do control voltage for pitch. Right. Um, and you can do anything from DC up to audio rate. Or I'm loving the oscillator, by the way. Is that something mm. you knocked up? That's uh, a, yeah, what's, just, uh, what's going on there? <laughs> so, uh, so I use it as a scope to, you know, to demonstrate what's happening. So, so for instance, uh, say we took this uh, blue trace here. I can like, demonstrate the patching. So. If I look at the blue input, uh, I can choose somewhere for that to come from. So, for instance, if I take the yellow trace, so you can see it's patched it over to the blue. Ah, uh, okay, right. Or, uh, for instance, the, the pink one, I can do the same. So you can see, um, you see there that, uh, let's just move that up a bit. You see there you, that it, in effect, is acting like a buffered malt. Right. So it's like, 
And um, so you have 64 presets that you can choose from you know, eight banks of eight. Uh, but they can also be selected um, you know, by triggers. So it's on the key on the beat step here. I've got ah, a trigger so coming. So you could sequence all kinds of. Yeah. So wow, it can okay. patch on the fly. And, and, it will repatch everything up to 50 and how times. How fast is that? Uh, 50 times a second at the moment. 50 hertz, right? Okay. So yeah. I mean, it's it's possible it could go higher, but if needed. Because you could do that waveform switching, can't you? Where yeah. you can then you sort of end up slicing all the waveforms yeah. together, yeah. right? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is so. Last time we saw it, it was prototype. Yeah. Was Where are we now, and when um, when when will when will we so be able to buy it? I'm hoping to release this um, at the end of November. Um, it'll be 249, um, and also it comes with, um, there's a, an expander module here, which allows you to access you know, the chain. So, uh, so for instance here, this is the 16 inputs that you've got going into this one exchange, and right. th this would be 89. Okay, and that's all linked together behind the scenes with the, uh, yeah, the ribbon use, cable, right? using the ribbon cable. And the data all moves, the data for you know, synchronizing uh, patches and so on, um, moves down the, the CV and gate lines on the Eurorack power bus. Right. So if they're, if they're unused, if you're using them, you can use a dedicated connector. Right, okay. Um, oh, neat. And it, it actually sends a MIDI, it broadcasts MIDI down that bus, uh, which you know, th these modules can pick up and decode. Right, okay. Um, oh, nice. So I'm hoping in the, in the future to uh, using the USB to provide an editor as well that will right. allow you to you know patch things up. From, well, I guess from another one would be you know to be able to kind of go well, you could break out the MIDI into trigger and CVs you know from yeah. from a unit like that or yeah. a modified unit yeah. that would make sense as well. Yeah. So any any uh, MIDI that comes down um, the USB connector is then put onto the onto the bus. So like program change or you can switch programs with notes. Um, right. And the, uh, the, the, the chain following happens, um, you know, the module sends sysxes between each other to... Right, so, so they, it's all like standard MIDI. Oh, um, right, yeah, neat. Which I, I'm going, hoping to open source and, you know, give all the details of how that works. Brilliant, so um, end of November or mid-November and we'll be able to see them, right? Uh, I'm sorry? We'll be able to get them in November. Yeah, end of November, yeah. Thank you very much. All right, okay, thanks so much.